everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the 12 o'clock session, which is AI in the security frontier. Here we have Jonathan uh, Carvalho, who's a solutions engineer at Cloudflare. Uh, Jonathan, having worked in tech for over nine years as an application uh, security and solutions engineering, Jonathan stands as a seasoned uh, professional with particular focus on the online gaming, media and entertainment sectors. Jonathan, having currently serving as a solutions engineer at Cloudflare, navigates the delicate intersection of engine innovation and security, and he plays a pivotal role in accelerating and fortifying applications and APIs ensuring robust protection in the face of emerging technologies such as AI, which is the current de rigueur uh, buzzword today. So, Jonathan, over to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Can you hear me okay, first of all? Cool, nice. So, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here today. I can see some familiar faces already. And so, um, I just want to start with a question. So, have you ever wondered how hackers are using AI to <laughs> launch faster and new attacks? or have you ever wondered how Cloudflare is using AI for the good and actually to stop these attacks? So I think I'm gonna answer some of these questions today. And so before doing that, of course, let's set the scene and this is the agenda for today. So um, basically I'm gonna give you some insights on what we see on the internet. Of course, I'm gonna introduce Cloudflare for the ones who are not familiar with. And yeah, let's look at then the security insights um, then I'm going to touch base on the AI power tools and how malicious actors are using those tools today. Then we will dive in into how Cloudflare is using AI to detect those attacks and how we do that into, um, let's say, five steps. And then, of course, looking at new uh, attack vectors, how we look at uh, things like time to mitigate, which is an important metric, and how much should the time to mitigate be. And then we will close up with a, a perfect feedback loop. So for the ones who are not familiar with the Cloudflare, uh, Cloudflare's mission is to make the internet better. And how do we do that? So basically we build uh, one network for everyone and everywhere. So we have 310 points of presence. So we deploy servers across 110 countries. Uh, we connect our network to other networks. And so basically we have over uh, 12,000 uh, connections uh, across the globe with uh, ISPs, telecom operators, and big enterprises as well. And then, of course, we have a network capacity of almost 230 terabytes, uh, sorry, terabits per second, which helps, um, you know, um, detect uh, those attacks and actually put defenses in place when it comes to volumetric attacks. Um, on top of that, we are very close to the end users, which means we are... Um, able to reach those users in about 50 milliseconds. Of course, that depends on of the type of content or the type of request, but typically we are uh, very, very fast. Of course, on top of that, uh, we build uh, our products and services. So all the way from you know, protecting employees and secure the access to the applications, uh, making sure that the email is secure as well and they are protected against phishing and malware attacks. We actually protect applications and websites as well through web application firewall systems, uh, bot management and DDoS mitigation. And then of course we do provide some uh, networking services. So if you want to connect branches through one as a service, uh, that's one of the options. We do have uh, firewall as a services as well and layer three uh, protections. Of course, on top of that, we do have a developer platform. So if you are a software developer, uh, you can deploy your code at the edge using our serverless platform. And then we have observability services. And so you can get access to a lot of data uh, regarding the services that you deliver through our platform. And so if you want to learn more, we have a booth here today. It's at B11, uh, which is down there. And you can talk to our experts as well. So looking into um, some insights and what we see on the internet today, so the graph, the graph on the left hand side, uh, you see these are the application attacks and the volume that we saw for the last year. So the uh, blue line means um, the volume of attacks that we saw uh, the last six months comparing to the previous six months. And so you can see an increase in, vo in attacks uh, when it comes to application uh, layer uh, attacks. And that means actually, you know, attack traffic is increasing on the internet which is a concern. 
And then when it comes to some of the stats, so today we deliver a lot of HTTP traffic, okay? And so 6% of that is actually blocked uh, by Cloudflare. So we do protect our uh, customer services and applications. And HTTP anomalies count for 30% of the most common mitigated attacks on the uh, Cloudflare network, okay? Uh, when it comes to API traffic, uh, we nowadays support around 55%, uh, which is huge, huge, and this is increasing actually. Uh, so most of, this, most of the traffic that we see is actually automated and uh, it's using uh, API tools, things like uh, XML and JSON, okay? And so in there, what we have seen was the SQL um, injection was the most common attack, contributing to 35% of that, okay? When it comes to account takeover, uh, Microsoft Exchange is actually the main service uh, targeted out there and surpassing uh, WordPress at the moment. Of course, this is not going to stop here, okay? Uh, and the reason for that is because we have seen a raise in AI power tools, so like malicious actors using AIs, uh, to either, you know, do some social engineering, uh, crafting smart uh, phishing emails, um, using AI as well to, you know, create malware and as well as create new exploits. And so, and you have some examples here, right? So uh, if you're not familiar, uh, nowadays there are two main tools, WormGPT and FraudGPT, okay? Um, so these are basically available in the dark net and they can sell for let's say $2,000 per month. So everyone can get access to these tools today. And what they do is basically they are very similar to ChatGPT, but they remove the safeguards that ChatGPT puts in place. So everyone can go there, type what you want to do, uh, especially if it's a malicious uh, action, and it will help you, you know, to uh, come up with the exploits to build malware, malware and, you know, increase your evasion and try to look for uh, vulnerable uh, resources out there as well. So with that, the question is, how do we detect them before they happening? So that's the main question that we want to answer today. Of course, when it comes to uh, new attack vectors, especially zero trust, um, of course, there is no information out there, right? Um, and what really matters in this case is the, is the time to mitigate especially when it comes to CVs, which is actually very important. Um, any security solution should be able to reduce the time uh, to mitigate. And so this is more special when it comes to web application firewalls, which I'm going to talk to you throughout this presentation. So, and then the question is, you know, okay, if the time to mitigate is the first metric and it's the most important metric, uh, how much the time to first byte should be? Is it 24 hours? Is it 30 minutes? Is it le less than that? And I believe we can answer that, que that question with uh, some real life examples. And so the first one that I have here, it's actually, and perhaps you are familiar with it, it's log for shell. Um, so this was um, an attack that we saw on 2021 and it was very popular. And so if you're not familiar with it, log for shell is actually an open source library from the Apache uh, project that actually uh, helps managing the log pipeline, okay? And so we came um, in first contact on December um, the 9th, around uh, 3.30 UTC, of course, following by a tweet uh, post um, indicating where the software or like the exploit was available. And then basically it took us um, almost 20 hours to put protections in place, okay? Of course, this was not ideal, but the fact that we put protections in place before we start seeing attacks in our network was already good for our customers. The second one is actually Altruisen Confluence. Uh, this was another good example. This is actually more recent from uh, 2022. Um, of course, we came in contact on June the 2nd around uh, eight o'clock UTC and then we were able to deploy protections for our customers in less than four hours. And of course, these are some of the uh, rules that we put in place to block uh, the attack. And then the question is, okay, um, is it 24 hours to mitigate? Uh, okay, is it 30 minutes better? Are these numbers good enough? 
And we believe the answer is no. So the ideal time to mitigate should be zero. And so by definition, zero days are not known and they, they sell very high in the dark net. And if you are the target organization and if the first payload uh, goes through, then you have to deal with the security incident. And of course, uh, you don't want to do that. Um, and basically bypasses are the thing when it comes to uh, new attack vectors, but I will show you how Cloudflare is actually um, trying to solve that problem. Um, and basically the, the clock starts before the zero day, right? So you want to be able to have the defenses in place before the zero day is out there. So typically WAFs uh, uses um, signatures, uh, but they are not enough. But they are here to stay, okay? And at Cloudflare, we have a lot of experience building those signatures. So we have almost 11 years building those signatures. We have top class humans, um, especially uh, security researchers and security uh, experts looking at the traffic, analyzing the traffic, writing those signatures, and then testing those signatures before deploying them to the production network. Um, of course, um, these uh, signatures that you can see here, uh, they are part of our uh, manage rule set. And basically, we officially market that we can mitigate an attack under 30 minutes uh, with these signatures. But if you have some security uh, requirements, you can actually use the custom rules that you can deploy in less than 30 seconds. Okay. So basically, we have uh, over 300 signatures. Uh, they are tested in our platform against um, millions of applications. We typically source the information from the traffic that we see. Uh, with, at, which at the peak is 30 million requests per second, uh, which is a lot. And so with this, what I want to show you as well is just a few details of the signatures so you are aware of how they look like in our platform. And this is a good example. So we have, of course, the action. Um, typically, by default, we set that to block. Uh, but if you are using our product, you can change that. But that will be the recommendation. Then we have some uh, rule tags. Uh, these categories are actually for us to do some uh, analysis and come up with the reports that we share with the community as well and for internal purposes as well. And then you have what actually really, really matters, which is the wire filter expression. And that's actually going to look at the traffic. If it triggers, then we are mostly sure that that's actually an attack and we will block it, okay? So what are the challenges to uh, reach zero time to mitigate? Of course, humans, right? So we have uh, top class humans, security experts looking at the traffic, analyzing the traffic, uh, writing those signatures, but they also have to eat, they have to sleep. And so that takes a lot of time, right? So how can we remove some of these challenges so we can reach zero time to mitigate? And the answer is simple. So we decided to combine AI with the human power uh, to catch malicious traffic. And what I'm gonna show you next is actually how we got there. And so we actually create smart machines and we use these smart machines with the human power um, to detect uh, the attacks. And this is how we did it. So step one is actually to create the corpus of the machine learning model. So the corpus is actually the training set, the data, and we see a lot of traffic. So on average, it's 45 million HTTP requests per second and at peak 70 million requests per second. So we use this data and we combine it with the existing signatures that we have. Of course, we have to remove a, a lot of the noise that HTTP has, especially because you know, some of that information is not relevant to us uh, for this specific purpose. And so we have to make sure that we don't have any class imbalance, that we remove any private and sensitive information. And once that's done, we move to the next step, which is actually, you know, augmenting the data. So once we have a good quality training set, what we want to do is actually increase the variety. So we have more diversity, which will help us to improve the performance of our detections as well. And so here you have an example of the data without any augmentation. On the right hand side, you have uh, data with the augmentation. And from our um, testing, what we saw is it's data with the augmentation is actually better performance than the one without. Okay. So we use 
or we generate artificial data, but from realistic traffic, okay? And so what we do is, of course, we change uh, characters, we add or remove words so we can have more diversity in our data set. And so once that's done, the step three is actually to train the model. And so Cloudflare is using nowadays TensorFlow. And because we have to run those detections at the edge, uh, we cannot use the full library of TensorFlow, okay? So we had to use a, a Lightning version, uh, which is much faster because what we do is we deploy that machine learning model at the edge and because it runs in line and could not, like customers cannot afford, you know, latency, we have to have a light version of the uh, machine learning model running at the edge. So it's actually much faster to look at the requests and detect if it's a malicious or if it's a legit uh, request. And so, and so we are using TensorFlow Lite, and that gives us uh, three times the performance boost that we needed. So step four is actually deploying uh, the classifier on the network. Um, as you can see here, uh, we uh, check the, MCAM, the upcoming HTTP request. Uh, we then do some normalization and transformation, so we have to remove the noise um, of the HTTP traffic. Uh, then we do some filter, uh, some extra extraction, and then we do machine learning inference, which allows us to have um, as an output uh, a number uh, that it's basically a score, and that score gives us, uh, you know, it's uh, given to specific attack vectors, and then after that, what we do is some calculations to come up with a more general and global um, WAF attack score. And that's actually what we give back to customers and to ourselves as well. So the way customers are, um, you know, digesting and using this information today, um, it's on our dashboards through, you know, the uh, WAF attack score. And here we have an example. Um, of course, we get a lot of attacks, right? So on the left-hand side, you see this graph. This is actually the attack traffic towards our uh, blog page, right? And you can see here there was an increase in traffic but as well as the machine learning model was actually detecting some additional tra um, uh, traffic uh, from attacks that the signatures were not picking, okay? So the score goes all the way from one to 99, being one malicious and 99 clean traffic. And so then if you want to build your own rule, you can use the WAF attack score to do that and build your own custom rules. Um, so in this case for us, because we um, want to lower our risk. Um, our rule was, you know, if the uh, WAF attack score was less, was less than 10, let, then let's block the traffic. Um, typically you have, you know, depending on the risk level that you want to uh, take, uh, you can change this number as well. So next, what we did was actually very interesting. So we had a, a team of engineers uh, building this machine learning model. And they look back in time and they search for other CVs or like attacks that happened in the past that were very critical and where at the time we didn't have any signatures. And so they run the same testing with the signatures and with the machine learning model. And what we have found was actually, you know, the machine learning model was actually detecting those attacks as being malicious. And therefore, the efficiency of the machine learning model was actually uh, pretty high, telling us that he was uh, most certain that that type of requests were attacks towards uh, services. And of course, not picking on Sitecore, but this is, was uh, the most recent one. Uh, and this was actually one of the use cases that we uh, tested in our environment. So in terms of the feedback loop, so we believe that signatures are here to stay, okay? And on the first column, you have the traffic that it's uh, been uh, picked by our, our machine learning. Of course, we source this from uh, 45 million requests per second. Then you have the traffic that it's been picked by our signatures. And then you can see here that there is a difference between them, right? And that's actually the interesting traffic. And um, what we do with that is basically we have security experts looking into that traffic um, and then building the signatures that we can then feed that back to our uh, managed uh, rule set, okay? Um, of course, we 
use the same um, information to improve existing uh, signatures, as well as we use that information to create new signatures. So when it comes to the feedback loop, um, it's almost uh, automated. Uh, of course, we are working on that to be 100% automated, but there are some um, phases in which we still have to have humans um, doing its, uh, its work. So in terms of the feedback loop, uh, here are the signatures that we feed that into the machine learning model. Then we curate the model. We deploy the model on the network. We analyze the traffic. We have the security experts building those uh, new signatures. And then once we create those new signatures, of course, we test them and we deploy them. But we also use them for the new version of the machine learning model, improving the data that we already have. So to wrap up the session, um, of course, we at Cloudflare, we combine humans with the AI to improve our detections and provide better security products for our customers. Um, our WAF solution remains a layer approach, which means we have different layers that you can use to increase your protections. Of course, one of them being AI, the other one signatures, but we have other things as well that you can use. And with these, we do believe that we can actually, um, you know, um, solve the challenge of the WAF bypasses, which are a real thing today. And we can bring the time to mitigate to uh, zero or close to zero. And with that, Thank you so much, and I'm hoping for questions. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, do we have questions in the room? Yeah, sure. So, did you get any false positives, and how do you deal with false positives if there is a score of the AI blocks something that is a non security threat? How do you deal with that? So, um, yeah, it's a good question. So, um, as I said before, we have those security experts uh, looking at the traffic. And so what they do is once they uh, create those signatures, they test them on real network traffic. And so once they go through that process, they try to build the signatures in a way that they reduce false positives and false negatives, okay? Of course, with the machine learning model, um, it depends on the quality of the data, because if you put garbage in, you'll get garbage out. So we try to improve the data that we have, so the model is actually more accurate, okay? Um, of course, you can build exceptions if you want. So for example, if you have any specific security requirements and you notice that this score is not giving you the right results, you can build exceptions or you can actually increase or decrease the score levels. So you can, you know, fine tune your uh, manage rule. Yeah. So, so the model is not used in, on live data, it is used to create the exceptions that which are then... No, no, it, it is used in real life data, yeah, 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 yeah. So the way we train the model is offline, but then we deploy the model at the edge and it runs in line with the HTTP traffic, yeah. And so we actually analyze the traffic and then we decide whether that's, or we score the traffic, right? So if it is an attack, perhaps the score will give you close to one. If it's clean traffic, perhaps it'll give you a score close to 19-1, yeah, yeah. Any more questions? Jonathan, I have one, um, which is, uh, do you see the, the level of automation becoming more sophisticated as the GPT models and AI become more improved over time as well? Is it just gonna be a constant cat and mouse between you and uh, it, 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 with it, AI models? Yeah, it is always, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do see those tools becoming more automated, of course, because that's going to make their lives easier to launch new attacks and much faster as well. But at the same time, we are trying to automate our processes as well, so we can have you know, those protections in, in place as much quicker as we can, uh, without perhaps human intervention. Or that's what we aim for in the future. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, two more. Yeah. Hi, thank you. Uh, just actually off the back of that question, are you seeing in order to reach that zero uh, time to mitigate humans being completely removed from the picture? Or is there a point where you need SMEs, that human intervention, otherwise the feedback loop just wouldn't work? Mm. 
we, we are working on that challenge because we want to automate the entire process. Uh, I'm not sure we will get there, but uh, we are trying at least, yeah. Because uh, as I said before, I think, you know, if we can have a process that is fully automated, we are going to be much faster to deploy those defenses at the edge so we can protect our customers, right? And so that's what we are aiming. If it's going to be possible, I don't know, because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the false positives and false negatives are actually very, very low. So, and for that, today, the way we do it is having humans looking at the outcomes of the testing and then changing the signatures if we need to. Okay. Yeah. Um, see, for um, like you're saying, most AI attacks are, you know, going for red. Uh, how much common are um, AI? Uh, cyber attacks than just regular manual ones? Um, yeah, good question. I don't have visibility on that because um, <coughs> the way we see hackers using those AI tools is actually to build, um, you know, new malware perhaps or uh, like building phishing emails. And for us, we just see those attacks when they come into our uh, network, okay? So I cannot tell if the hacker use these type of tools. Perhaps in the future we will know once they use more and more and these tools and we get access to that visibility as well. But for now, if they, for example, use AI to launch an SQL injection attack or cross-site scripting for us, it will be the same, right? So I don't know what tools do they use because I don't have that visibility. Yeah. I would like to, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I have another one. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Um, do, do, you see, do you see the automation being more targeted towards creating better social engineering attacks rather than um, kind of brute force attacks into the systems themselves? Because obviously humans are the weakest link yeah. uh, most of the time. Yeah, I do. I do believe that, yeah. Especially when crafting uh, phishing emails, I think they will become much more um, human-like, mm. let's say much smarter and so perhaps for us that we are working on a daily basis perhaps for us will be oh this is just a, an email and it's fine but it's not it's just a phishing email so i think yeah from i think that will be one of the weaknesses like having ai tools to do social engineering and, and building and writing phishing emails i think that's what's going to be the strength of those tools yeah yeah, yeah. okay do you think in in reverse then that some of the tools that you need are actually tools that can spot what has been written by an AI then? Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. So basically what we are doing here with the web application firewall, we actually do the same, for example, with bot, manage bot management or our zero trust solution. So when it comes to securing email, we are actually applying the same techniques to that. Of course, it's much more difficult of a challenge simply because HTTP traffic is standard, so there is a specific format for that. When it comes to emails, it could be anything, right? So it's much difficult to uh, detect those phishing attacks. Mm. But uh, hopefully in the future we will be able to tell, oh, this was actually written by an uh, AI tool or it was actually written by a, a legit uh, user. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, please give Jonathan a round of applause. Cool, thank you.